Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing really well today. Uh, in today's video, I just wanted to share some of our plans for this year's garden. I'm really excited about some of the things that we have thought about doing. And of course, everything kind of takes on a life of its own as you go. So I expect even my plans that I'm sharing with you today to maybe morph a little bit. Um, but I have this little box of seeds. These are all brand new seeds that I've either ordered or picked up down at my parents' garden center that I want to show you because we're doing a ton from seed this year. I also want to show you just briefly how I like to organize my seeds and then how I'm organizing my brain because I'm having like there's way too many things going on even just in this little box and I can't hold it all in. So uh, anyway, I'll show you a spreadsheet that I am kind of working on. It'll probably change as well as I want to put more information in. But anyway, the biggest piece of information is that we have a vegetable garden uh, for those of you guys who have. Um, followed along. It's just a fenced in raised bed garden. We've got 12 raised beds in there of various sizes and we'll probably pop a picture of it up on the screen so you can see in two of the three by four beds. So two of the smallest beds toward the outer part of the garden. I already have garlic planted. So there are 120 heads that will come up, but that will only take up space until the first part of July when I harvest. But most of the rest of the space is going to be dedicated to a cut flower garden this year. I'm so excited and I do a ton of flowers around like in flower beds that we use for cutting, but I ne have never done like a dedicated space for it where we've got like a good plan in place for succession planting. So we make sure to have blooms all the time um, and then just trying out different varieties and figuring out which ones work the best for me in my area and it will be different for everybody. Um, so we are planning on doing a whole series on it, uh, kind of a beginner cut garden series. And so I'm hoping that you guys uh, are excited about it. I think it's where a lot of our brains are at right now. A lot of us are kind of um, shifting toward flowers and doing more flowers. And um, it's not all gonna be just in my vegetable garden space. In fact, we will be dedicating a large portion um, in another area of our garden to dahlias. I ordered a ton of dahlias and I've had really good success just with the few I've planted throughout the, the past few years. They've grown beautifully, huge, gorgeous flowers. So I'm really I'm hopeful about that project. So we'll do videos on that as well. Um, but anyway, so that is kind of in a nutshell what we're planning on doing. Now I will be planting other vegetables and things somewhere else, uh, which we'll share about a little bit later, but I've got a space dedicated for like bigger crops, vine crops, squash and melons and corn, uh, sunflowers. I'm gonna be planting somewhere kind of on their own where they can just grow and be huge. Um, and then also some filler type things like raspberries and such. So anyway, it's January. So that's what we're, that's like what my brain is thinking about. And it snowed last night. It is bright in here in the sun porch. In fact, I hope this video <laughs> looks good. It looks really bright behind me right now. And I do have a shade up, but let me show you what it looks like outside. It's quite pretty. Doesn't it look pretty? It's already starting to melt a little bit. You can see it dripping off the house right here. It's supposed to be 41 today, but that's how this winter has been. It's been amazing. We get a little bit of snow. It melts off within a day or two and then we can get some new snow and it melts off. I love it. So yeah, that's what we're dealing with outside right now. It's very warm up here in the sun porch and it's kind of, I don't know, it feels really nice. So anyway, it's a good day for a video like this, I think. So let's just go through my seeds. Um, I ordered from two different places online and then of course these are all, this is a pile from my parents' garden center. This is not all seeds. That's filler paper right there. So there's my stack. Okay. So first of all, I, I find that you get differing things from different companies, companies online. And we had the question this last week, like, how do you know a place is legitimate? Um, you know, I would just, there's a lot of talk online. There's a lot of good gardening groups. Um, you can ask questions in those groups where people have had good luck ordering. I typically like um, Johnny's Seeds, Selected Seeds is where I order the bulk of my seeds because, I mean, they don't show up with pretty pictures on them. All the pictures are online, but the backs of them have so much cultivation information that I just like, it's the best I have found. Like of any packet I have ever bought ever, they have the best information, which has been so helpful to me. And I've actually had more success following their, um, suggestions on the back, like knowing, yeah, 
I'll get into that when I talk about specific varieties. This pile right here is from my parents' garden center. Um, you'll notice that some of the packets are white. These are bulk seeds. Um, so we have a bulk seed, well, I think I have a picture of it, um, where we carry like 300 plus bulk seeds that are really like our best sellers that do the best in our area. They do have a website too where you can buy those. And so we'll link all of these websites down below if you're interested. But I do plant a lot of those types of things here. And it's particularly like a lot of it's vegetables. Um, because I know they do really well. Um, so I lean on that, but I also have some really fun ornamentals that I picked up from their seed racks. Um, some of them are from the Snake River Seed Cooperative, which is um, packed in, this is like based in Boise, Idaho, which is just 67 miles down the road. And then I did order a couple of packets of nasturtiums from Eden Brothers, which I have ordered labella pock tulips from them. I ordered um, most of my dahlias from them this year. And then I'll pick up a random variety of seed from them every once in a while, and I like their quality as well. Um, so I guess let's talk about these first. I ordered two different varieties of nasturtiums from Eden Brothers because they had some colors I wanted. You'll notice that I've ordered a lot of white blooming flowers because we are also planning on keeping the west side primarily white. So it'll be a moon garden. Um, I will be doing, because it's such a large area, I won't be able to pack it all full of perennials and shrubs and things the very first year or for several years. And I don't really want to do that anyway because I think if we take our time, maybe we make better plant selections um, because we have time to think about it and live with the, like this year I'll add some and then I'll be able to live with those those plants for a little bit, see how I like them and then decide what kind of textures and things and structures I want next to them. Instead of just like blah, like just filling it up all at once, it just kind of, it doesn't give me a chance. I'm such a slow mover when it comes to decisions in the garden. So I like a chance to live with them for a little while. So anyway, I have some nasturtiums. There's no picture, but I'll try to find a picture. It's called Moonlight. Um, and then I've got nasturtiums Vesuvius, which is a nice salmon pink, kind of a clear pink. Nasturtiums are super easy to grow. Um, a great one for a beginner. And I don't know, I think I may have ordered other nasturtiums, but we'll see. Um, so this right here is the pile from my parents' garden center. I'm gonna go through the white packets first and you'll see like some brown packets. I've got some from my last year's stash. These are the bigger seeds from the bigger bins like peas, beans, uh, corn. We put in little brown paper sacks. Okay, I do have one flower. This is the dwarf sunspot sunflower. These are sunflowers that stay really short, but they get huge flowers. They look almost like a traditional big sunflower head, but on a very short stocky plant, which I thought would be really fun for Benjamin. Uh, I've got a couple of different kinds of lettuce. So I've got a red, it's a red romaine lettuce and then a Tom Thumb Butterhead Lettuce, which is more of a green. Um, I've got a one ounce of each one of these. Like, that's a ton of lettuce seed. I'm gonna be mass planting this in, in a spot this spring I'm really excited about. I think it'll look really pretty. Um, French Breakfast Radishes. I actually don't like to eat radishes very much, but they are so satisfying to grow that I grow them anyway. I give them to my mom. Cherry Bell Radish as well. Nice little red round, just classic. And then the Connecticut Fields pumpkin, because I realized uh, I went through my last year's stash and I don't have, I don't think any classic pumpkin shape. And now that Benjamin will be closer to three this next Halloween and he may have a little bit more fun with the carving process. Um, and then the rest, let's see, I've got a little stack from the Snake River Seed Cooperative. There's some really interesting ones here. So these, the rest of these, oh, hold on. And Oregon Sugar Pod Peas came out of the bulk bins too. And I love, these are my favorite um, peas, snow pea. You can have them as a snow pea or kind of a, uh, you can shell it later on if you let them mature. Um, so the rest of these came off racks of brands of seed that my parents carry like kind of out in their store a little bit. Um, the first one is Purple Perfume Nicotiana. Nicotiana. I grew, oh, well, I have Nicotiana. It's a really beautiful kind of like smoky mauve color. I grew it from plants. I bought it in four inch plants uh, a couple years ago and they seed, but they're not, they're not like prolific reseeders. They just reseed themselves right in their spot that I planted them and they grow beautifully. So this one is just that nice clear purple color, um, three feet tall, really fragrant. I got a few different kinds, no, two different kinds of ornamental corn. My mom actually put this in my pile. I was down there <laughs> shopping for seeds and she's like, here, you should grow some of these because she wants to come. I told her she could come cut flowers this year at any time since I'm growing so many. Um, glass gem corn. Isn't that cool? Won't that make for a really cool accent in arrangements? I don't really know how that's going to work, but I'm going to try. And then this one's called a strawberry popcorn. And these little corn cobs, 
They call them cobs. No, they call them ears. Two inch ears, little itty bitty ears with the red um, little corn seeds. My goodness, my terminology is awesome. I am so excited about this because I think these are gonna be perfect for flower arranging. Anything small like that. And then I've got some millet. This is Indian pearl millet. This is actually a type of penicetum. This one will get like six feet tall. The seeds are like a beautiful blue gray, which I thought would be beautiful to try growing. Um, this one is interesting and you'll have to let me know if you guys have ever grown it. So the toothache plant is another name for it. And it says that it chew the flowers or leaves for an epic, crazy three minute mouth experience. <laughs> uh, so highly medicinal and gives you a tingly clean mouth and a surge of energy. I told my mom I'm gonna be out in the garden just like trying to chew this one down for some extra energy this year, but this will be interesting. And the flowers are kind of cone shaped, kind of yellow, maybe a little touch of orange in there. Um, we've got this one called Bee Friend. Um, and this one you can actually sow as a cover crop if you want to. Um, the flowers come up and unfurl kind of like fiddlehead ferns. And so I thought it would be a really interesting one. And a lot of these are really good for pollinators. And that's another thing we're working on this year is uh, creating more food for our pollinators. This one right here is a silvery lupin, which I don't have very good luck traditionally with lupins. Um, so I thought I would try them from seeds this year instead of from plants, because every time I plant them from plants, I get kind of depressed when they die on me. Um, so anyway, I thought, well, I'm in it for a couple dollars. We'll see what happens. If you have tips for me, let me know. Here's another Nicotiana. These are botanical interest seeds. This is Indian Peace Pipe, a nice white bloomer. Thought this one would be beautiful. What other things is about this one? This one's super um, lovely in a white garden or planted with equally tall or colorful flowers like delphiniums. Tracks pollinators, especially butterflies and hummingbirds. I love that. And then we've got some Nigella, Love in a Mist. This is chocolate and cream which I might plant on the edge of my moon garden because it's kind of black and white. So that kind of works. I think that's pretty. So that is the pile from my parents' garden center. And then the rest are Johnny's seeds, which there are no pictures on these, these um, packets. So we'll try to see if we can find some to throw up on the screen. I'm gonna organize these really quick into piles because I do have several of like one kind of uh, flower. Gah. Didn't I already have a snapdragon down here? This is why I have a hard time organizing my stuff. Okay, there's so many. Oh my gosh. I ordered so many. I don't know what I was thinking. I can't, I can't even remember what some of these are. I'm gonna have to look them up. 22 different kinds and some stacks have several different varieties. So let's start with this one right here. These are all specialty types of pumpkin and squash. There are four of them here. We buy so many of those like flat, squatty looking Cinderella type fairy tale pumpkins um, and then some specialty blue ones. And they're expensive because they are so dense and heavy. Um, and I just thought, you know what? This year I'm gonna do a better job at growing my own so I don't have to go out and buy them. And hopefully I grow enough for myself and maybe um, a few friends of my friends and family who can um, benefit from that and they can come shop in my little patch. Uh, first one is porcelain doll. So the porcelain doll is kind of a squatty pumpkin that's a porcelain kind of pink color. I used a couple up here on our front porch last year and I loved them. Um, so I was really excited to find that. Next, I've got Taybell Hybrid Acorn Winter Squash. Now acorn squash are super easy to grow. I grew some last year. I've grown them every year, I think. But this one is like a really silvery greenish blue. They're a really interesting color. Uh, and I thought it would be really interesting to try that one. Then I've got the green striped Kusha. I am probably, I'll probably butcher a bunch of these names. Um, but this one is kind of a, almost a gourd looking uh, squash where it um, is bigger at the bottom and then the neck kind of curls over and it's green and white, um, which I think, I think I'm going to plant some green and white or um, all white pumpkins over on the west side to be a little bit of a space filler. And I think it'll look kind of magical to have some of those uh, worked into that area. And the last one in this section is the flat stacker pumpkin which is a white pumpkin that is flat, which you can stack. Next, we have got a amethyst improved purple basil, which um, I grow a basil basil in our garden. And I think I'm gonna try it in containers this year. 
I, I've had it in containers as well, but I think I'm gonna mainly put it in containers. And then I wanna grow a few different varieties of ornamental or more um, showy basil for fillers in bouquets because they hold for so long and they'll even probably start to root in your vase. The next one is called um, Helipterum Pyro White. Um, I'll let you look at the name. It's a paper daisy, which they look an awful lot like uh, straw flowers. Uh, so white, really delicate looking um, petals with a really dark center, a dark eye. And these I will be starting from seed. Obviously, I'll be starting them inside, that's what I meant. The next one is a cherry caramel phlox, which um, I very first saw on Florette's website. Um, and they're always sold out. <laughs> Their seeds sell out so fast. Um, so I was really excited to get some. This is an annual phlox uh, that I'll be direct seeding outside and it's a beautiful color. I've got a calendula right here, which I'll be doing a lot of Lady Gad Godiva orange and yellow, but this one's called Flashback Mix. Um, and this one is just a mix of a whole bunch of different colors, like oranges and yellows and in between. Um, and they're more of a single type uh, calendula. So I think it'll be fun to have kind of that difference. Then I've got three different kinds of stock, which will be for like a late spring harvest. And then I can maybe do another crop for fall when it cools off a little bit. Um, but I've got three of them here, all of which are a double type. So I've got iron, iron, apricot, iron blue, and cat's white. Whoa, there we go. I love buying these in the grocery store. They look like um, delphiniums or I like anything that's got that long kind of spike bloom on it. Um, I actually have some in an arrangement inside right now. The next one is Hyacinth Bean Ruby Moon, which is just a beautiful vining bean plant that grows super uh, fast and has gorgeous flowers and really pretty beans on it. Um, so it says that you can harvest the pods for use as a fresh a flower when half the pods are on the stem are shiny and firm to the touch and the flowers are edible. Um, so this would be easy to pop anywhere. We've got lots of little fence sections and I just thought it would be fun um, to throw these around. So they're not all going in our vegetable garden space. I just plan on kind of having flowers all over the place. I've got two different types of digitalis or foxglove, um, the pink gin and cafe cream, which um, I had excellent luck in my last garden with foxglove. I mean, they were phenomenal in my last garden. Um, here, I haven't really planted a whole lot of them. I planted a few last year, so we'll see how they do, but they are a biennial. Um, so, you know, you grow them one year, they bloom the next year, and then they seed themselves, usually around where they're at, and then the cycle continues when the mother plant dies after two years. Um, so I planted a whole flat of an apricot-colored uh, foxglove last year, and it was like the first year, so I didn't get any blooms. So I'm hoping this next year I have this beautiful stand of apricot colored blooms. But I thought it would be fun to get started with some more of these. These are highly poisonous, so you do want to make sure to be careful. I remember in my parents' garden, because we always had cows in the pasture, and we had to be really careful about rhubarb and foxglove and delphinium and all of those things, making sure they didn't end up in the compost pile in the pasture. So keep that in mind. We've got a couple different types of pincushion flower. We have a fama white and salmon rose. It says that these are an annual. So I've never actually grown pincushion pin flowers as an annual. I have some out in my garden that are amazing perennial. The plants even look good right now out in January. I mean, the, the foliage still looks really good. So I'm really excited to see how these do, but they're both beautiful um, and they look like they have some nice long stems. Snapdragons, of course, I started quite a number of snapdragons from seed last year. I did Potomac White, which I bought more of, and I don't know why I did that, because I saved a ton of seed. I might see if I can, my mom might want these. I also um, bought some Madame Butterfly Bronze with White and Madame Butterfly Bronze. So last year I grew the Bronze with White, and again, I'm not sure why I ordered more seed. Uh, I guess it never hurts to plant more snapdragons, but they are prolific seed producers. Um, so I gathered a lot. And then I also ordered the Potomac Apple Blossom right there. And I thought that would be fun just to kind of throw in the mix. But you guys, these varieties, the Madame Butterfly Bronze with White and Potomac White bloomed all season long. They never faded. Um, they're in a spot that got a little bit of morning sun, uh, a little bit of filtered, and then sun again in the later part of the day. And they just kept on going. They were on drip irrigation. They were watered with everything else, like all my regular perennials. I didn't do anything supplemental. I didn't even fertilize them. And they continued to grow amazingly. 
Uh, lots of different kinds of sunflowers. We'll just go ahead and pop the pictures up on the screen. One is called, a, it's a single stem sunflower called Pro Cut Plum. We've got one called Jade. Pro Cut White Night. Another Pro Cut White Light. I think I ordered a couple packets because those will go on the west side. We've got a Pro Cut Lemon and Sun Fill Purple, which I think this is a branching type. No, single stem type. So I've got a lot more sunflowers in my last year's bins. Okay, we're making good progress here, guys. So we've got more Nigella, Love in a Mist. This one's called Albion Green Pod. We've got Elysianthus. It's Voyage to Champagne. I have never grown Elysianthus before. Um, it does say it's recommended to sow the seeds indoors, so we'll be giving them a try. And these actually came like in a little vial inside here. I kind of want to look because everything else is like loose in the package. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see inside there, but it, they are tiny. They're pelleted too. Dang. Okay. Bells of Ireland, which are another one that I tend to buy a lot of, especially in the springtime because they're such a really pretty chartreuse -y kind of light green. Um, really good filler flower for arrangements. Uh, zinnias, I did gather some of my own seeds last year, but I ordered more um, Benary's Giant Salmon Rose. Wonderful, wonderful color, huge flowers. I ordered the Giant Lime and the Giant White. Um, Oryngium White Glitter, it's a sea holly, so it looks like a little thistle, it's a perennial. Um, and I love, love this plant. I don't have any in my garden right now, so I'm excited about that. Um, Rudbeckia Sahara. So you guys know if you saw my winter sewing video, we already started the cherry brandy in the water jug out in front of our greenhouse. So the Sahara is a little bit more of like a true autumnal colors, like it, it's like oranges and things like that. So I think that'll be pretty to mix up with my cherry brandy. Couple of different types of sweet peas. I've got the Spencer Ripple Formula Mix and a mix called Old Times. And then I already started the salmon colored ones in my water jugs. Couple different types of amaranth, which you guys, amaranth, I think these are both ones that grow really big. They are good sized plants and I thought I would grow them up kind of near a fence so I could kind of lash them to a fence if I needed to. But two different kinds, one called Coral Fountain and another one called Red Spike. Um, and I thought that these would be wonderful to work into like garlands and arrangements in the late summer fall. A uh, couple different types of gomfrina. So I'm going to be growing a lot more truffula pink gomfrina because you guys remember that in my garden? It was like right up here, right by our front sun porch. And it, those plants were beastly and they make for really good dried flowers and they just perform their heads off. And I also had a white variety out behind our gazebo that was amazing. So I wanna add more to the mix. Um, I've got a Gomfrina Audrey White and a purple right here. These will be started inside. This one I'm actually unfamiliar with in terms of growing. It's a tender perennial called Crespedia, Crespedia Sunball. It's a really neat, it kind of looks like the flambe that I plant in containers, but those are really miniature. This one has got like bigger yellow, like spherical flowers. <laughs> they're really cool looking. And I think they're really, yeah, they're really good as a dried flower. The last two, I am i don't have any experience with either. Oh, this is the same thing. I ordered two of the same thing. Did I mean to do that? Copper Plume Atriplex, Atriplex is a beautiful filler uh, flower. It has red and green leaves and stems, and then they produce like these tiny little seed pods that are really papery looking on the whole stem. Um, they're just so pretty. The color is perfection to me. Um, so I thought this one would be fine. And this one is a direct seed, which I'm super happy with all of those that are direct seedable because I don't have, I mean, I have lots of grow lights, but I, it's still like my base still seems limited. So I think I'm going to be starting some in the greenhouse as well. Okay, move these out of the way here. Okay, so now I just wanna to touch briefly on how I like to organize my seeds and everybody has a different method that works for them. Um, you just have to find which method works for you. I've tried out several in the past. In fact, the last thing that I had was the galvanized seed kit, say, saver kit from Gardener Supply. And that was really nice, except for the fact that it was too small. Um, and so a lot of us like, 
get ahead of ourselves and order a ton of seeds. And then, yeah. And I also, for myself, need to have a, a system that's easily easy to expand or contract. So like I can add a lot of seeds to this quickly. Um, and then I also can take them out easily and I don't have to monkey around with anything. Um, Aaron and I organize completely differently. Like when we're um, organizing lists and things, I like to write everything out by hand. He likes everything to be on the computer. So anyway, everybody just likes to do stuff different. These tubs right here I got at Staples. They are meant for CDs and DVDs, um, which I haven't had either of those for ages, but I have two of these. One of them's labeled herbs and vegetables, and the other one is labeled flowers. You see right there. And what I did was I created, I just cut it out with cardboard. We had a cardboard box here. I just cut out my own dividers um, and folded them. So they look like this right here. And they slide in here and they're, like rigid enough that they hold up so like right here is my herb section and it's very meager my herb section sucks it's like four four packets i need to amp that up a little bit um and then the next section is vegetables right here and then the back section is all of my bigger bags so like right now the organ sugar pod peas will go in the back there and i just know because this is how i buy my beans corns and corn and peas that they are all right here but everything like within the vegetable section is all organized and this is the other thing um, I like to get into my seed bin and be able to do this. Like I want to be able to quickly roll through my seeds with my fingers and see every variety I have really quickly. Um, so that's just how I like to do it. Um, uh, and I try to keep them as alphabetized as possible. It stays fairly organized all the time. So let me show you what, except for the lids. I'll show you the flower one. This one, in fact, I had all of my seeds in just one tub and I went and bought a second one because I knew I was gonna have so many more flowers. So this one doesn't have very many for flowers right now, but you can see annual flowers in the front, perennial flowers in the back, and I can easily just like filter through, like I can easily see everything I have really quickly. I've actually got a lot of seeds in here. I'll be starting this well as like in addition to these. Mercy. I don't know, we all have big plans in January, right? And then like real life hits when once you get to spring and you realize how much extra work you actually have outside because right now it seems like we'll have all the time in the world to dedicate <laughs> to, all, to all of these seeds. So we'll see how this thing shapes up. But anyway, that's how I like to organize. In fact, I might take just a few minutes really quickly and organize just so I can show you guys what it looks like when it's all done here. If I have a lot of one thing, I should say, I like to rubber band them together. So this right here is my section of zinnia seeds. I've got a whole bunch of them right here, but that's easy. So many pretty sunflowers this year. So those are all of my flower seeds right there. Now I did include like the ornamental basil and the ornamental corn and the millet because I'm gonna be growing these as like kind of cut flower fillers. I'm not gonna put them in my vegetable container. I'm gonna just slide them in on, on their side right there and I might just create a new category. That's the beauty of this one. I just need to pop another piece of cardboard in the back and just put like ornamental filler plants and then I can just pop these plants right back here and I know exactly where to find them. Um, but this works really well for me and it's really simple. Um, yeah, and I can see everything at a quick glance. Now I've got a couple vegetables to work in. And there are all my vegetable seeds, which it's kind of interesting when you have so many different styles of packaging. You know, I've got like some seeds of change in this little yellow packet. Um, there's Baker Creek seeds. A lot of times come in these gigantic packages. Um, so they don't fit. Well, they might fit. Hold on. Let's see. No, I think they'll fit. So scratch that. I won't complain about the size of those packages. That's perfect. It would be kind of nice though look wise to have everything be kind of uniform. That's my formal garden tendencies kind of kicking in there. Okay. So the other nice thing is that they don't take up very much space. They're pretty, um, they're stackable and you can just slide them into a closet and they're like watertight and rodent proof. So there is that. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys today was the spreadsheet that I'm working on and it's growing because every time I bring new seeds home, I have to add them to this list so that I don't accidentally forget something. Otherwise, I mean, you guys know how it goes. We buy so many seeds and then, um, Sometimes like I'll just I'll carry the same packets around from year to year. Okay, I hope you guys can see this. In fact, I think what we might do is just put a screenshot up so you can see it. But there's my spreadsheet. 
with a bunch of glare. There are four different columns and two different sections. So the sections are labeled so indoors and direct seed. Um, so I know which ones that I need to be thinking about now and I need to be starting to plan on what um, supplies I need to gather to start my seeds inside. And then the direct seeding uh, section are the ones that I can start outside later on, which is awesome. Um, and then they're broken down into the columns. The first column is the flower type. So you'll find there like aster, digitalis, syringium, gomphrena, etc. The next column is the specific variety I'm dealing with. And then the next column is what color it is um, because that's a little bit important for some of my projects because I need to organize where they're gonna go in my garden. And then I've got a column for the sow schedule. Um, so it tells me like here, it's broken down further into like, I need to sow it six to eight weeks before last frost or three to five weeks or 10 to 12 weeks. And then there's also any special instructions that I found on the back of the package. Like if I need to pre-soak the seeds, I put it in this column and that way I know like I need to do that before I start the seeds. And so really like I see all of the information that's really important and pertinent at a really quick glance and then I don't miss any varieties. Um, I was thinking I do need to add uh, one more column and then just indicate which ones are perennials. There aren't that many, but I can just put like a little P next to it and that way I know like, okay, maybe put the perennial ones that I'm starting out in flower beds and not in my vegetable garden, cut flower garden area. That way I don't have to transplant them later on. Um, anyway, that's how I'm organizing myself this year so far. Um, I so far have 57 rows, so 57 different kinds of seeds, but I didn't list out on two of them. On the sunflowers and zinnias I have, and snapdragons, I have so many varieties that I didn't even list them out. So I would say that I have maybe between 70 and 80 different varieties of seed that I've got on the docket. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna actually happen. Oh my goodness. But this spreadsheet, it was a really good start for me because I've never done that before. And I think that's gonna be really important. Um, and I can you know, refine this and add extra columns. Like if I know I can sow something in succession, like baby's breath, for example, really only gives you a couple of weeks of harvest. So if I can indicate in a row like, okay, you need to plant it this week and then plant it two weeks later and two weeks later, and then you make sure you have a succession crop, kind of like how we do vegetables. Um, that way I can have all that information in one space. Uh, and then we can improve on it every single year. So that's it for today's video. I hope this was interesting to you. Just kind of going through seeing my process, I really needed to get those seeds organized and because there's snow on the ground, it seemed like a perfect day to do that. And then just share some of the plans that we have for this year uh, because I'm really looking forward to it. We've been planning this cut flower garden since like last year. I told Aaron last at the end of the summer when I was looking at those gorgeous zinnias in the raised bed, I told him I wanna do all flowers. I just want this whole area to be in flowers uh, because I enjoy that so much and I enjoy making bouquets so much um, that I thought it would be really fun. So um, we will be using a lot of these flower seeds in that space plus a lot of um, pre-started flowers like I mentioned and then we just have stuff going on all over the place. We have such a huge list of projects for this year uh, and a lot of a lot of fun ones that I'm excited to share with you guys kind of as it evolves. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and watching this video. If you saw anything that was interesting to you, we will link the websites down below where I got these seeds so you guys can check it out. And I would love for you guys to grow these same things along with me and so we can share notes. We can compare notes and learn from each other. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.